My name is Annette uh, Mary. I'm an agronomist by profession. Um, I work for a company called Kenya Highland Seed, uh, which sells a brand of seeds known as Royal Seed. Royal Seeds. And, uh, I focus on greenhouse seed, uh, just supporting greenhouse farmers in uh, producing our seeds. Great. So here we're standing in our greenhouse. Uh, maybe you can tell us more about this tomas uh, these tomatoes and the variants. Tell us something about it. Uh, this greenhouse is a medium-sized greenhouse. It's uh, 8 meters by width and uh, 18 meters by length. And uh, it's the most common greenhouse that most farmers will have right now in Kenya. Uh, it's been constructed by Hotipro. And uh, you can see the design that it has. It has uh, flaps on the side for ventilation, the front and the back as well for ventilation, and the height also is high. That's important for good production. The varieties that we have in this greenhouse are two varieties. Uh, one is called Bravo F1 and the other one is called Harmony F1. All these are targeting uh, the Kenyan market. Uh, and in the tomatoes market, we have two market segments, the local market and the commercial market. So Bravo is a variety that targets um, both markets because you, it has an oval shape, as you can see, and it also can be able to give a medium size and a large size tomato. Harmony F1 is a variety that targets mostly the local market because the size is medium in size. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, talk about the how, how uh, in a greenhouse, how do you go about the process of planting this tomato? What and what are required? Uh, the first most important thing a farmer needs to look at is uh, soil analysis because every single area in the farm has a story based on what has been grown there. So the state of the soil will determine uh, everything that will happen in that site. So even before you construct the greenhouse, even before you choose where the greenhouse is constructed, it's important to do a soil analysis so that you can put the greenhouse in a place that does not have diseases uh, or other things that may hinder good production in that greenhouse. So the first thing you do is you do a soil analysis uh, the government through uh, CARI has a lab, soil lab, where you can be able to do that. And we have also other private companies that can do that for you. Now, after you've done the soil analysis, then you can know your soil is free of diseases, or even if it is, how to treat it. After you do the soil analysis, you set up the beds. Uh, you do double digging first so that you can be able to loosen up the soil because the width of the tomato plant is very, very, goes very deep. So you need at least a whole uh, inch or 30 centimeters of soil that is free. After that, you uh, after that you look at your soil and you are able to know the fertilizer regime. Now, after you've loosened the soil, you come and set the beds. Now, the length, the width of the beds should be between 60 centimeters, which is two feet, to around uh, one meter. Therefore, depending on the width or of your greenhouse, you can be able to set up your beds. And then the walking paths as well. You should set it at least between uh, 50 centimeters, 40 to 50 centimeters is, is in order, because you're looking at a space where you can be able to walk and also be able to carry an equipment to be able to spread. That's how you get set and prepare for planting. Good. Uh, let's talk about uh, during, uh, after you planted your tomatoes, uh, how long does uh, do the tomatoes do to grow? And when is the right time to apply the fertilizers plus the first pruning and all that stuff till it grows tall okay. to reach the height? So at planting stage, let me start with nutrition. Uh, there are three key nutrients for our plants. There's nitrogen, there's phosphorus, and there's potassium. Nitrogen is important, let me start with phosphorus. Phosphorus is important for rooting, for the roots and the root health. So that's the nutrient you need for the root establishment. Hence, when you're planting, you plant with the phosphate fertilizer. They are, the most common fertilizer available is DAP, and in areas where the soil is very acidic, you'd be advised to use NPK for the same purpose. Uh, the second fertilizer you need is uh, nitrogen, like fertilizer, uh, a fertilizer that has nitrogen. And that one, after you plant it, after transplanting, four weeks later is when you come and apply the uh, nitrogen fertilizer. Now, at that stage, the crop is at vegetative stage. So you come and you apply the nitrogen fertilizer, it will help in uh, nourishing the, the, the leaves of the plant. And finally, you will come with the high potassium fertilizer at six weeks to eight weeks, depending on the variety. Mostly you're targeting the flowering stage of the plant, particularly the tomato and uh, capsicum plants, which are mostly grown in the greenhouse. 
at that stage you come and steal all your fertilizers you are applying them through the base base application that is that means you're applying in the soil so that the plant can take it up to the roots also to supplement the base fertilizers you do foliar application foliar application is where you apply fertilizer to the leaves of the plant now the first fertilizer you may apply would be the vegetative foliar which is high in nitrogen and you'll apply it at four weeks the same time you're applying the base fertilizer you start putting the foliar fertilizer as you apply your sprays you can mix it within the recommended rate uh, with other uh, pests and diffusion management chemicals. Then the second time you come back, you come with uh, at six weeks or eight weeks or a flowering stage with foliar fertilizer that is for flowering nitrogen. That is applied continuously until it's been Good. Uh, let's talk about uh, maybe the diseases. What are the mostly diseases that are likely to face tomatoes while they're being planted inside a greenhouse? Good question. Now, diseases is a very important topic because that's where most farmers fail. And the first most important thing I can say is you need to scout the crop. When I say scout the crop, it means walking through your crop, seeing if there are pests, if there are disease. Now there are two ways of managing a crop. You can either use normal or, or, or chemicals, or chemicals that are, um, uh, let's call them organic, inorganic, if there's something like that. <laughs> uh, those chemicals are, are used uh, to to prevent and to cure. So those are the two uh, options under chemical. Then you can use biological control. Biological control is using products that are not necessarily chemical, but supplement the, the habit. For example, over here, there is a trap, this is a yellow trap, and this yellow trap is used to catch the So instead of spraying, while you're walking the crop, it gives you, it helps you to be able to catch the first few insects that come into the greenhouse, but by the time you're spraying for them, you're already taking care of the problem, while not putting too much chemicals in the greenhouse. Another way is using water traps. Water traps are a good way of also cut, uh, harnessing um, and using water traps that have pheromones. Now pheromone is a female that attracts particular insects, particularly when looking at tomato. Now let me go to the leaves. To the leaves. So a greenhouse tomato, tuta absoluta, is a very destructive insect. And uh, using the water trap with pheromones is a very good way of capturing the first few insects that are in once you capture that, you can be able to do other sprays, normal sprays that are available in this section for companies to control that. Now, the other pest that is common for tomato is white flies, and in the same way, as I've shown with that, um, it's called a, a, a stick, sticking, sticky trap or a, a, a sticking card. Uh, different uh, biological companies that can be able to supply that for you so that you can be able to capture the white flies the fast way. Right? They multiply very fast, so it may seem like a very simple thing, but it helps because it avoids them multiplying. Then you can be able to control the test. As you can see, our crop is free of that. Hmm. That's great. Now let's talk about uh, the examination of the tomato. Sorry, let me go back to diseases. There are two key diseases um, that you look out for, especially in Kenya because of a high temperature during the day and cold temperature during the night. Uh, you find a lot of fungal diseases coming. So the two mon most common fungal diseases are powdery, uh, early blight, or late blight. Uh, so those are diseases that you can use, you can you can get in the greenhouse, it's good to prevent them. So start doing preventive sprays early. When you just transplanted, you can do a preventive spray after transplanting. And uh, every two to three weeks, you can do preventive sprays as well. Okay, uh, maybe you can talk about uh, the pruning and what is the certain height that a tomato should reach and not go beyond to avoid maybe the... It's uh, looking them to the All right. What is the designated height? Okay. So I wouldn't call it a designated height particularly, but uh, it ranges between when the plant is between 1.5 meters to let's say two meters in height, and that at that stage the crop is at flowering stage. And um, at flowering stage, you start layering the crop. But pruning is in two ways. There's pruning the suckers, which are the heads that uh, of the crop that are trying to come uh, to the crop and uh, you start pruning when they just when they just appear. When the sucker is just around an inch in uh, width, if you can be able to touch it and snap it out, you remove it from the plant. That enables the plant to be able to put more energy into the main stem, which is where you're going to get your fruit. So you start desaccharing as soon as they appear. Probably most varieties will start at two weeks towards the end of the crop. But from two weeks onwards, the crop will start having suckers. The other way of pruning is um, pruning
pruning the yeah, excess yeah, leaves. Yeah, now this happens when the crop you started yeah, harvesting yeah, the crop yeah, and the older leaves yeah, are at the bottom. After you harvested yeah, the first yeah, leaves, yeah, the leaves yeah, that are at the bottom of the fruit bed yeah, should be removed. Because as you layer the crop, the leaves at the bottom will start touching yeah, the crop yeah, or the soil. And that way yeah, it can pull in moisture yeah, and get diseases yeah, that can go to the crop. So those are the two things you pruning the tomato. Now, supporting the tomato. Supporting the tomato, there's chenesi and there's layering. There's chenesi where you give the crop rope. At this stage, normally, you're training the plant, you're giving the crop, crop rope so that you can be able to train it to go upwards and go with one stem. And secondly, when it starts making fruit, it can be able to take the So that happens mostly at uh, week four to week five, when the crop has just started flowering. You can do it earlier because the most support you do to the crop, the best. Uh, so you, you, you wind the rope around the dust, around the stem. Secondly, is layering. Now when the crop is first flowering, between six to eight weeks, you can start skewing it in one direction. Now how you layer the crop, you make sure that one line of crop is, layer, is being laid in one direction and the other line of crop on the same bed is being laid in one direction. This is what avoids what we're talking about, the interlocking of the stem or mixing up of the of the stem, which kind of can cause issues like um, disease spread very easily, especially stem cancer and gastritis, because that uh, can be able to cut another plant just due to contact. The second thing is um, you make sure you layer the crop uh, in one direction and the other direction to avoid the interlocking. Also, um, ensure good pollination. You will understand that here we're not outside. There's no bees. There's no insects that can pollinate the plant. So the only way to ensure pollination is making sure that there's good ventilation in between the layers or in between the beds of the, of the crop. So that way you enable. So then you're able to ensure good pollination and you're able to ensure that the spread of disease is minimal. Okay. Now let's talk about the production. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, farmers, they like to know, yeah, I'm doing this. What is the amount of production I'm supposed to get when I do all this? Like in this certain greenhouse, the, 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 the length and the width, what is the amount of production or grades of tomatoes that one can uh, maybe get on the minimum on the higher side, depending on the maintenance? For a tomato, uh, a size of uh, you, when you talk of production from uh, our company's perspective, we calculate to the to the to the kg per plant. A plant of Bravo F1, for example, I use Bravo F1 as a variety. Uh, Bravo F1 can be able to give you between uh, 10 kg to 20 kg per plant, harvesting for a period of six months to even eight months, depending on how, how you take care of the crop. I really emphasize on that because if you don't take care of the crop, if you don't manage it well, of course, diseases and pests come in and the crop will not last that long. So to be able to attain that kg, you need to be able to ha have very good crop management. So let's work it out with 10 kgs per plant. 10 kgs per plant being the minimum for Bravo F1. With a greenhouse like this, you will have between 350 to 400 plants, depending on your spacing. If you space them at um, 45 centimeters, which is one and a half foot, you'll have 350. If you space them at 60, uh, well, sorry, 60 centimeters, two feet, 50 plants, uh, and 45 centimeters, which is one and a half foot, you'll have around 400 plants. Working out with 400, which is what most farmers will do, because they want more from a greenhouse, you'll be able to get 400 times 10 kg per plant, four times. So four times at minimum from a greenhouse like this, you should be able to get. At maximum, probably 10 to 12 times, depending of course and how you take care of the crop. So between four times to 12 times is what I can say. Now let's talk about uh, greenhouse management. Most of the farmers maybe may try and plant tomatoes and they see a good production. And yet they try and redo the tomatoes again. Does that affect the production inside that greenhouse? Yes. Uh, tomatoes are in a, fa in a family called Solanaceae family. Uh, that is the family that the tomato is in. And this family we also have the most common crop we have in Kenya that most greenhouse farmers do are capsicum as well. They're in the same family. So uh, what you're talking about is, for example, if after removing this crop of Bravo F1, should I put another crop of tomato or what is the advice? Now, depending also, going back to your soil analysis, it's important to know, is your soil very depleted? Because if it's very depleted, then it's good because uh, tomato family are heavy feeders. So if it's depleted, a depleted uh, mini, um, uh, soil, it's good to give it a break so that you can be able to retain or regain more nutrients so that the next crop you're putting has good production, all right? So that's the first thing you look at. The second thing you look at 
is the soil diseases because what happens when you return the same family of crop for example i put bravo f1 and i put uh, capsicum uh, the next like passerella f1 uh, when i put passerella f1 after tomato bravo f1 you'll find the soil diseases that was there for bravo f1 will still be able to multiply with passerella f1 so you'll find uh, the soil diseases keep increasing and then your crop cannot be able to do anything else so that's why we, we emphasize it's good to do crop rotation. Don't put uh, the same family uh, coming together, uh, following each other as a crop. We advise for Kenya, for example, the crops you can alternate with or crop rotate with tomato or capsicum are onions. Onions are not in the same family as tomatoes, and that ensures that the crop gets a break. Now, onions are also good because they are short crops. A variety like red, red pinoy in three months is ready and you after you remove your red pinoy you come in with your with your capsicum there it gives the soil a break and you are able to uh preserve your soil for better production we tend to find farmers are releasing their plants and their fruit when the demand is low and yet they tend not to get any profit so what is the good time to release your tomatoes to the market I would say for the greenhouse farmer, we have a higher advantage than the outdoor farmers uh, because we have an ideal setting where we can be able to do our tomatoes. So I would say for every region which are different, make sure that your crop is ready when the demand for tomatoes is high. That would mean the market is not flooded with tomatoes. So you schedule your crop when uh, the other people are, are harvesting is when you're planting, for example. So after you've planted, when they are finished uh, selling their tomatoes is when yours is ready. So that you can be able to be competitive. Because let's be honest, you will be producing smaller, small quantities over a long period of time. So at the end of the day, you need to be able to fetch more packaging so that you can be able to recoup the money that you put in in that investment. So I would say timing the market is very important. Time the market in a time when the demand for your tomatoes or your capsicum is very high. And that a greener farmer can be able to do because he or she is not depending on the weather to be able to produce. Maybe when you wind up, uh, what maybe is your last tip? What is your advice to farmers who maybe are doing tomato in the greenhouse or are planning to start to do tomato uh, in greenhouses? I would say do your research. First of all, look for a greenhouse design uh, that uh, is proper and can be able to give you the right ventilation. Do soil analysis, it's very important because if I put a greenhouse in a place where the soil is not good, then I'm not going to get a from there. And thirdly, it's always very important to get the, uh, get the training, know how to manage that crop. Don't just go into it blindly, know how to manage that crop from the beginning to the end. Come for training, as we will see, we have training every month on greenhouse farming in different regions in Kenya so you can be able to tap into such training so you can be able to learn prior to your investment and third look for the market don't grow a crop that is not suitable for the market we have we said we have two market segments we have the commercial market and the local market look for your market make sure you're growing a variety that you can be able to meet the market demand and thirdly look for a variety that is disease resistant and tolerant to soil and pests and agriculture we have those you're most welcome <laughs>